Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, June 5th, 2023. Hope you all had an amazing weekend. Taking a look at our prep screen in the markets right now, currently we have been within a pretty narrow Globex range, which, which um, I think Daniel even mentioned in the chat. Um, but keep an eye on the trading tip of the day. It's going to be pretty important for today. The equity index futures are currently trading within a narrow Globex range. This can often lead to large intraday swings in price. So let's going to be we're going to be monitoring that throughout our session. Again, that narrow Globex range may be a little bit more challenging to trade within for the time being. But then what this can often lead to is some of those larger moves in price. We're going to be keeping an eye on that during our session. Our prep screen has also been updated um, based off of that pretty significant move to the upside on the equity indexes. As such, our sell zones, uh, several of them that we had marked have been taken out and the trend has been continuing to the upside. So you'll notice that we have new sell zones on the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, as they all have been moving to the upside, as well as forming new buy zones. So as far as trading with the trend, more looking for trades that are going to be in the momentum and direction to the upside. Uh, sell zones, as we've seen, are going to be elevated risk, and looking to participate with our buy zones on those pullbacks in the overall context of an uptrend. So keep that in mind. Good to see everyone here. Hey, Dingo. Good to see you, Liz. Good to see you as well. Uh, looks like Fed Chairman speaking right now. So keep an eye on that. Uh, that points me also to our other economic reports coming out for today. Going to be pretty busy this morning. We do have PMI composite flash at 9.45 a.m. Eastern time. And then at the 10 o'clock reversal time, we'll have factory orders as well as ISM services index. Uh, after our session, we'll have 12.30 p.m. Eastern time investor movement index. So pretty busy day as far as economic reports. What's in the news is going to be reflecting our trading tip of the day. So a little bit more on the kind of neutral to bearish side. Taking a look at Market Watch, we see U.S. stock futures show S&P 500 consolidating at 2023 highs. That's again reflecting that narrow Globex range that we've been seeing. And then going over to Yahoo Finance, stock futures waiver, oil rises after Saudi output cut. A lot to keep an eye on. We did see a pretty significant gap up on crude oil. So we'll take a look at that shortly. And then for our breakout trade opportunities, if the markets do push lower, area that I'm keeping an eye on where we have the three touches on the bottom side. It's going to be on the NASDAQ, one hour short trade opportunity, 14,248. So again, breakout trade short, NASDAQ, 14,248. And then overall, just a little bit more on the bearish to neutral side as far as what's in the news, trading to the day with the equity indexes in that narrow Globex range. I also believe the S&P and NASDAQ are currently still inside day. Um, so again, inside days, we expect additional volatility. Uh, so we want to be prepared for that as well. Russell and Dow did break out to the upside just by a little bit to the upside. And then keep an eye on our other prep screen. Some of these areas have already triggered as far as our buy zones and price getting a pullback into our leg base, leg base group of candles. Some still have yet to trigger though. So keep an eye on some of these other areas where we see our buy and sell zones, as well as our breakout trade opportunities. I want to bring your attention to Canadian dollar. You can see an area where we're setting up for that breakout trade to the downside. Area of tested support where price came down once, twice, three times. You're looking for that breakout trade to the downside. And then keep an eye on those areas where you do have those pockets of points. Those are where we want to stay in some of those trade setups a little bit longer. And then we'll recap at the end, go over open buy and sell zones. If the equity indexes do continue with the trend to the upside, we'll be forming new buy territories and new buy zones in the context of an uptrend. And then our sell zones within our sell territories will be more of those target prices. All right, let's step back out. So I was taking a look at the trend, which is reflecting uh, basically the, the low Globex range or pretty tight range in the Globex session. Currently just in a neutral point on the trend, 0 0.89. 
So not really at that extreme low point of 0.6 or an extreme high um, overall, just pretty neutral with the equity indexes, two of them still being inside day, two of them being outside day, just a little bit to the upside. And then just again, taking a step back. So been getting a lot of emails on our Mastering the Charts three-day event that is going to be this weekend. So June 10th, 11th, and 12th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. That does include one month of the Mastering the Charts recap and review sessions on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as well as all of the content and recordings for those sessions. So if you haven't registered, I'm going to post the link in the chat to do so. Under our upcoming events page, you will see the breakdown day by day of what's included um, on each day. Overall, this course is meant to be interactive, engaging, answering your questions specifically. So keep an eye on that. That is, again, this weekend, June 10th, 11th, and 12th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. Market Watch, Yahoo Finance. Oh, Jeff, you got something to add? Yeah, I'd like to kind of direct everybody's attention back over to the um, the picks, the additional picks. Uh, we have 10 years setting up right now for a confirmation entry. British pound uh, looks like gold and silver have already started to move, but silver can still be a um, confirmation entry. The dollar is entering into that, that supply, so we're starting to see the shift in a lot. I just wanted to point those out. I, I did get into Euro and the 10 year and just, uh, yeah, just only up like a couple bucks on it. But um, yeah, the dollar's in a nice place looking for a pullback. So we're as we're approaching the market open and Caitlin finishing up the, the pre-market routine. Okay, One of the things I did put out there about uh, for folks that do sign up for the uh, Master in the Charts recap and review is that we would help you recover your tuition cost. Well, I would help you <laughs> to cover your tuition cost throughout the day. Um, and, you know, of course, the, the trades that Caitlin and I both put out there or setups, we're just looking for 50 bucks a day on some of these. Okay. Now we'll cover your tuition. So I encourage everybody to jump in, participate with us. Recordings are available on that. So you can go back and reference it. It's a good foundational course as far as what we, we teach out there. So I'll send that right back over to you. Um, yeah, the, the Euro trade, uh, we're up 68 bucks on that so far. So, and uh, the 10 year looks like it's coming around a little bit. Uh, up just, uh, yep, I'm down just a tad on that one. But, anyways, back to you. Just wanted to kind of point that out that there's some trades. Uh, starting to manifest right now so thank you Perfect. thank you jeff so hopefully some of you guys are in on some of those setups from our other prep screen that jeff mentioned some really great trade opportunities puts a lot of effort into those so make sure you guys are taking advantage of a lot of these setups on the other commodities all right back out to let's see the news again market watch yahoo finance more on the, the neutral side, you can see coming over to Market Watch, stock market today, S&P 500 futures consolidate at 2023 highs. Similar over as we come a little bit lower. Your stock futures show S&P 500 consolidating at 2023 highs. Come over to Yahoo Finance, stock futures waiver. So overall, a little bit more on the bearish to neutral side, I would say, just the um, be sure to incorporate again the overall higher time frame trend. It's going to give you an idea of where we're looking for some of those longer running moves. Um, outside day on the Russell and the Dow, S and P and Nasdaq still currently inside day. Coming over to Econo Day, so Monday, June fifth. Taking a look at our session PMI composite flash, nine forty five a.m. Eastern time. Not going to be a market moving report, but still one that we want to monitor. Actually, no market moving reports for today. Um, but then that 10 o'clock reversal time, we do have two other economic reports to keep an eye on. Factory orders and ISM services index at the 10 o'clock reversal time. Both of those marked with the green dot. So as we come down, 
you'll notice that these are two that merit extra attention. So potentially seeing some volatility in the markets, not quite as big as the, the market moving reports, but still ones that we want to keep an eye on during our session today. And then as mentioned, I was taking a look at the trend in the pre-market, still at that neutral point, 0 0.87. So overall reflecting the fact that we are inside day on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Alrighty, coming over to our chart. So crude oil, very large gap up. If you saw once oil opened, we gapped up and then started dropping since then. Notice how price gapped up right into a sell territory. And then price had a strong move down. So we're looking for that imbalance of orders within our buy territories and our sell territories with our sell territories looking for more unfilled sell orders that's going to be pushing price down. We go over all this in the Mastering the Charts three-day event. Um, overall, price got close to our zone, didn't quite hit it, and we did get a pullback. So if price does continue to move higher, we're still keeping an eye on that fresh 10-minute sell zone. That is going to be 75.36. Stop at 75.64. This is one we've had on our charts for a pretty decent amount of time now. Uh, still a fresh zone formed from May 2nd, so a little over a month ago, but still looking for those unfilled orders. 75.36. Stop at 75.64. And Jeff also just posted in the chat, crude oil opening range breakout and gave you the range for that, 73.43 to 73.71. Price moving back to the downside, we did form a fresh uh, buy territory, 20-minute um, buy zone within our buy territory. That's going to be down at 68.24. Stop at 67.63. All righty, going back out to S&P. So I mentioned S&P still currently inside day. Here's the prior trading sessions candle, prior sessions high, low, and close. We have not broken that high or low. So currently it is an inside day. Inside days, we know choppy market conditions, elevated risk. And also we can see that the price action for today is narrow within that Globex range. So overall, Low volatility, low price movements often lead to higher volatility and larger price swings in the markets. So currently inside day, let's take a look at the Dow 30 stocks. Currently we have one, two, three Dow stocks down over 94 cents. And we have one, two that are up over 94 cents. So three down. Two up is going to be negative one times two is negative two. So as a statement, cash is currently valued at negative two. Futures are trading at positive 2.75. So if cash is negative two, futures are trading at positive 2.5. Are we overbought, oversold, or flat relative to the cash market? We can answer that question. Cash currently negative two, futures trading at positive 2.75. Currently we are, great job Lizzie, slightly overbought, not by a whole lot, by about 4.75 points. Yes, yeah, so not very significant. Typically we look for, you know, much larger order imbalances or price differential imbalances between the futures market and the cash market. Currently up about, 4.75 overbought. Um, typically within four points or so, we consider it flat. So just outside that range. But overall, since we are slightly overbought, we may be looking for a pullback for futures to balance out with the cash market. We may see a drop in the futures and for futures to balance out with the cash market. Dropping back down to the hourly chart. 
So our nearest buy zone is still pretty far away since that last move to the upside was pretty significant. It's hard to find our fresh buy territories on the smaller time frames. Our nearest one is going to be at the origin of that last move to the upside. It was formed on Thursday. So take note where you have your three touches of resistance. Order fill. Buy territory and buy zone within the buy territory. Three minute buy zone, 4190.25. Stop at 4184.25. And huge move to the upside currently within that tight Globex range. So we'd be looking for some pretty large volatile moves either to the upside or to the downside. Keep in mind, since it is an inside day on the S&P, breakout trades are going to be elevated risk. But if we do break the prior, the prior trading sessions high, then it will become an outside day to the upside, at which point we'll be allowed to take those breakout trades. All right, NASDAQ. NASDAQ is going to be similar to the S&P as far as that inside day. Our sessions high, low, and close. Currently, we haven't broken the high or the low, so currently it's inside day, but stacking the odds in our favor. Trend on NASDAQ has been extremely substantial to the upside. So looking to participate in some of those longer running moves to the upside, I mean, looking for pullbacks into buy zones or taking breakout trades to the upside when we do transition to an outside day. So dropping it down to the one hour. And we see that pretty tight range on the NASDAQ, a lot of consolidation in the overnight session. Price coming back down to a by territory, by zone within a by territory. And this is where we have the three touches of resistance. We have our by territory. I'm in a by zone within our by territory, 14,300.75. Stop at 14,272.75. Five minute buy zone was formed on high volume during Thursday's session. And then just keep an eye on this area. You'll notice that just below it, field. we do have an area of tested support, uh, which is going to make that zone a little bit more elevated risk. Notice how just below it, price has tested support once, twice, three times, which may mean as price comes lower, we'd be looking for a breakout trade to the downside. Evening is the five minute buy territory in dead space. Exactly. Yeah. So we're seeing that area where price has tested support and resistance three times, which makes this buy zone a little bit more elevated risk. Um, price could more easily move through those areas. So just be cautious. And since price had a pretty significant move to the upside, it's a bit more challenging to find those quality buy zones within buy territories. Um, just be cautious with the NASDAQ but overall looking to trade with the trend, looking for some of those breakout trades to the upside is going to be when price breaks above the prior session's high of 14,628. All right, Russell, different picture. So S&P and NASDAQ we saw were inside day. Russell, currently an outside day to the upside. We did open up and break above the prior trading sessions high, started to pull back a little bit, but overall we are an outside day to the upside, which means on the Russell, we can look for those long breakout trades as well as those pullbacks into our buy zones. Started to break into that pocket of points to the left-hand side as well. So our nearest sell zone, gonna be a little bit further away up at 1868.1. Looking to trade with the trend to the upside and looking for a pullback into a buy zone. And we have to go back a little bit further down to our three minute buy zone within our buy territory. It's gonna be 1753.6. Stop at 1748.5. 
and really since after we formed that buy territory and that buy zone, you see very strong move to the upside. So looking for our buy zones, going to be more challenging to find them until we go all the way down to the origin of that move to the upside. See, lastly, the Dow, similar to the Russell as far as it being an outside day. To the upside, we did break the prior session's high just by a little bit, and then we did start to pull back. So outside day, we can look for those breakout trades to the upside and those pullbacks into our buy zones. Just keep an eye on where price is at currently. We've been holding this resistance for quite some time now. The price has tested a resistance once, twice, three. We're at that fourth time now. Once all those sell orders have been used up, we'll be looking for price to break above that resistance, which is going to be above 33,918. It's going to be that highest wake of those of the resistance. Again, breakout trade to the upside, trading with the trend higher, looking for price to break out above 33,918. Waiting for a pullback into a buy zone. I'm going to be going down to the origin of that last move to the upside. 10 minute buy zone, 32,876. Stop at 32,742. Alrighty, indexes, taking a look at the correlations here. A little bit mixed. So again, inside day, we typically see some of these uh, choppier price moves in the equity indexes kind of going in opposite directions, which we can see here. S&P moving higher, NASDAQ was moving higher, getting a little bit of a pullback. Dow had been moving to the downside, and Russell also moving to the downside. So a little bit more mixed market conditions here. As we come over to bonds, bonds had also been moving to the downside, currently getting a bounce back up. Overall, we do want to look at inverse correlation between the equity indexes and bonds. Internals was monitoring the trend. In inside days, the trend often stays pretty close within our no trade zone, which is at in currently at 0 0.83. So we'll want to monitor that as it maintains to be an inside day on the Russell and the Dow. Tick, advancing issues over declining issues, looking for some of those extreme readings. Advancing issues over declining issues did reach that extreme reading, you'll notice closing at 2091. So when we have significantly more advancing orders over declining, looking for price to rally up into a sell zone and then to get a little bit of a pullback for this indicator to come back down to that no trade zone. And then no surprise on the VIX as the markets had that huge move to the upside. The VIX had been declining, um, getting down all the way to 15, which is one of those pretty low points over the past several weeks now. So VIX is low, less fear and volatility in the markets as the equity indexes have been moving to the upside. And then lastly, our pre-market indicator. You can see a gap up in the pre-market, more upticks and up volume, a little bit more bullish sentiment. I think it's this gap over here just a little bit smaller, but still a gap up in the pre-market, more upticks and up volume, a little bit more bullish sentiment here, which is tying into the fact that the overall trend is to the upside on the equity indexes. So keep an eye on that. Trend is to the upside. We're looking for some of those long trade opportunities via the breakout trades to the upside, pullbacks into buy zones, um, but overall just understanding the market conditions. It is still an inside day on the S&P and the NASDAQ. We know as, as we are inside day, looking to take those quick profits, manage risk closely, as we're going to be expecting some choppier market conditions today. Hey, Dingo, let's see where your gray lines on your trend chart. Let's take a look. So it's the, let me bring out the, the no trade zone. 
So yeah, on the trend, I have the black lines marking that no trade zone range, which is between 1.2 and 0.8. And then as we get above 1.5, looking for some more buying to be coming in as the markets are declining, that extreme rating being at the two mark, if the markets are declining, and then if the markets are rallying, the trend moving lower below 0.6, it's gonna be where we're looking for some selling coming in. Yeah, the gray lines, um, probably going to be those black lines, which are isolating the no trade zone between 0 0.8 and 1.2, which is currently where we're at in the free market, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 putting us right smack in the middle of that no trade zone. So potentially some choppy market conditions today. Again, the trend is showing us that as well as the inside day on the S&P and NASDAQ. We just want to be a little bit more cautious during today's session. All right, I know some trades were uh, triggering um, from Jeff's setup, so I'm going to pass it back over to him. We'll take a look at his setups for today. Thank you, guys. Jeff, it's all yours. Good morning, everybody. Order filled. Oh, that must have been crude oil. Yeah. Let's take that to the downside. So crude oil, I did take a open range breakout to the upside and just got stopped out um, with at 7371. Uh, not really bearish on this, but uh, crude oil, you could take the open range breakout to the downside. But because of the news that came out over the weekend, a big gap up, and we'll see how that that plays out. Okay, you may even see price come back down to where the buyers did step in, right near the Globex low. So, be a little more cautious on that one. I am more looking to the upside. Uh, OPEC came out, so they're going to slash some million barrels uh, a day coming out of there. So. We'll see how that plays out, okay? So little volatility on that one. Uh, point Coming back to uh, a couple of the other trades, um, I'm currently in 10-year, currently in British pound, and uh, the euro, and as far as trade setups go. Um, dollar, keep in mind this one is a delayed, okay? Uh, but it is going into a supply zone, okay? So I'm not using the I'm using the dollar more as a guide, and uh, just to point that out a little bit. Okay, I'm expecting <clears throat> kind of a double top up here. Okay, we want to see how a double top or a double bottom starts to be manifested, and um, we use oops, everything that we do cover in the um, mastering the charts. Okay, is looking for that right location. Okay. So part of this right in here, we have a nice little support. Price broke that, came back up. Okay. And we're the location of our zone as you draw out the structure inside. We're right back up in that area where we should be considering looking for. Um, some sellers to step in, okay? I also wanna point out that the equity indexes have not reflected the move up on the dollar that we've seen over the last couple of days, okay? And in the overnight session, okay? So as an odds enhancer, I'm expecting price to kind of adjust for that, okay? So keep in mind how the equity indexes have, they're kind of have their on days and they have their off days, okay? On days uh, where the equity indexes and the US dollar are inverse correlated versus when they are correlated. So use it as an odds enhancer. Understand that trading environment that works best for your trading style. Okay. And how you manage risk. I just want to get another picture of that. Okay. Now, I did make some comments uh, in the chat uh, in the uh, Discord room 
about uh, anybody signing up for the uh, Mastering the Charge course. We would spend, an, you know, you get one month to do recap and review. And our main goal is to take a trade once a day and at least recover that cost, okay? And that's a lot of hand-holding on uh, Caitlin and my part here as far as, you know, making sure we put out high quality zones, okay? Just like the, the prep screen zones and such, we kind of watch for those and we're looking to make, you know, 50 to $100 a day to cover that cost, okay? We often say, let the market pay for what you want. And that's what we're starting to do, okay? All right, I did take a short trade on the S&P, mainly off of a, a tick chart and price coming up into supply. So looks like I'm taking a little heat on that at the moment as uh, some of that short covering comes in, okay? And uh, we'll see how that works out there. The tick charts on the equity indexes, okay? NASDAQ is right in the middle of that no trade zone, or not no trade zone, but uh, dead space, okay, and pushing up a little bit higher. Yep, going to get stopped out on the S&P. Dow, just now starting to break out to the downside, okay? So... As we start looking at the equity indexes, we have S&P going up, we have Dow going down, NASDAQ going up, and Russell going down. Happy Monday, okay? So the equity indexes are going to be a little bit more on the volatile side till we see some stronger direction. More bearish on the Russell because that topping or that rounding consolidation just above a resistance and we also have pocket of points and dead space on the way back down. So a little more bearish on the Russell and the Dow. Okay, I'm going to break this down. Dow had a little tiny speed bump over here. Okay. Order filled. What else we get in? Back in the Russell. Okay. Getting into that one there. I'll put a trailing stop on that one there. All right, crude oil, relatively quiet. We've been using crude oil as an odds enhancer. Okay, so we want to keep a close eye on that. Odds enhancer as far as direction of the equity indexes. Let me clarify that. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so we're, we got the euro up about 62 bucks. Uh, British pound. Ooh, taking some heat on the 10 year. BPM23. The dollar's just kind of quiet now. But a pullback on the dollar would send the FX markets up. I also want to point out that. When you're using these additional picks is you want to start to get an idea of what the dominant products are. Financial product, financial, 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 gold, financial, silver, financial. And um, well, these are commodities for sure. But the uh, they, we have a, they're more weighted on the financial type products like the FX or bonds. Okay, and we do have some commodities that are often referred to as in hedging situations. So coming back out on the VIX and some of our internals, okay, VIX is low and the markets are high. That's a, a positive divergence, okay? So at these extreme levels, often uh, people are just so happy and go lucky that the market's going up that they don't see the train coming, okay? 
So these extreme areas tell us to be very cautious, not take a trade, but say, hey, be on a defensive side because everybody is just too comfortable, okay? And uh, the VIX has been a long-term gauge of whether the markets are fearful of a, a correction or whether they're uh, complacent, where they just keep going with the trend, okay? Remember, none of this information tells me it's time to make a trade. It just alerts me to some of the bigger picture of things that are going on uh, outside the price chart that we look at. The trend is very low, below 60. Trend low, time to go. VIX low, time to go. And we have not hit a sell program, but we haven't hit a buy one either. Okay, so the tick is kind of neutral here. And advancing issues over declining issues are in that kind of no trade zone. Okay. Now, I, I saw a question of uh, Dingo posted asking Caitlin about the, the trend in that, that area. Between 80 and 1.20 is that consolidation area. The places to watch on the trend is the extremes. Trend high, markets declining into demand zone. Trend low, markets ascending into supply zone. The neutral area or kind of Order no field. trade zone between 80 and 1.20, okay? Again, these don't make a specific trade. They just alert us to the conditions are more on the extreme uh, uh, potential selling to come into the market, okay? Wow, looks like wheat is doing well for us. About ready to get out. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna have to take wheat off the table. W N two three. Ron, do you and Janet stay in that one? This one was a nice little textbook play. Let me get a copy of that one. Good old V-shape reversal. Yeah, I'm just looking for that target. Uh, we do have a nice pocket of points, but the target right about 631.38. And we're approaching that now. And dollars just quietly. Nice job. All right, let's take a quick look at um, how the NASDAQ is setting up. And here we monitor the top 10 market cap weighted stocks on the Qs, NASDAQ 100, not the NASDAQ composite, okay? So Tesla up five, Apple's up, and Netflix. Okay, so we got three out of the 10 that are more on the, the bullish side. On the bearish side, um, we're still seeing Google, NVIDIA, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, Qualcomm, and AIG more on the bearish. So as price is making a higher move on the NQ, we need to be paying close attention to any prep screen zones that we have on the other side of that, okay? And of course, any zones that you may have marked. As we come back and turn that into the in, internals, trend low, time to go, trend low, sorry, trend low, time to go, VIX low, time to go, no trade zone. So as we're watching the stocks here, it's not a time just to jump in point blank, but it's a time to start looking for that supply, okay? As we start watching uh, the, the individual stocks not running to the upside at this current moment, okay? Yeah, we're getting right up there. Yeah, there's a pocket of points on wheat, okay? But I also want to point out this information right in here, okay? So, you know, often taking profits is some of the... the Taking a profit on a good trade is often the most difficult part of trading because you have that fear of missing out, okay? 
So, yes, you do have a little pocket of points right there to get up to that supply, but be mindful that this is a sell territory that you're starting to dip into. Okay. Look, the next trade's coming up. Okay. Right now, people are bullish on this. It's had a very nice recovery. And it's about time to take a profit. Okay. Of course, you can always stay in a little bit longer, but when things look this good, I, I like to take a, a profit here. We take a picture of it too. These are great uh, pictures that I use to uh, journal. But I usually don't do a lot of writing down in a journal book, but um, I take pictures of trade setups. The information on here, the location to look for V-shape reversals is often when we have those three touches to the left, low pivot on the right, okay? And then we kind of see the mechanics of this last part building out. Uh, the supply zone to go short on this, um, I would first target the upper two thirds, okay? See, price made a dip into the buyers, pulled back, and made a higher high before price broke out, okay? So generally speaking, the zone is in the upper two thirds of that, um, that range, okay? All right, S and P still moving higher. Dow got a little bounce off of that. Okay, so I'm going to look for a breakout trade just a little bit lower on this. And Caitlin pointed out a really good piece of information in this, in the, the trading tip of the day. Okay, Narrow overnight ranges in the Globex are very important to pay close attention to when you're starting to plan out, well, how long will I be in a trade today? So staying in trades longer on the equity indexes, okay, we need to be aware of, of course, our surroundings, where our zones at, but a narrow overnight range often leads into a big run, okay? Since we started off as inside days, things are a little slower on some of the other equity products, okay? Also want to point out the S&P is moving higher and um, IBM and Goldman Sachs are going opposite directions at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Dow stocks negative. Sorry, eight Dow stocks negative and five positive. Three negative times two would be negative six, and futures are trading at positive 11, okay? S&P futures are overbought by about 18 points, okay? Six, yeah, 17, 18 points, okay? So S&P being overbought, but we're not in a supply zone, okay? We need to be very, very defensive at this point. Okay. Now I'm going to set up the Dow chart, Dow trade. I'm going to look, take the breakout. Okay. We can use this as one of those potential trades to help cover your cost of tuition. Okay. 33,770. Okay. Looking to sell short. And once I come, once I am short on that one, then I will come back and place my stop and look to take a profit. Okay. Yeah, the institutional trading that's going on here um, as we start is kind of that typical Monday morning stuff. What you have to start documenting, and I've I've already incorporated a lot of this in my trade plan, so I'm not using it to clutter up my charts anymore. 
is, you know, how big was that Globex range and whether price opened inside or outside the prior day's trading range. This all helps me anticipate uh, whether we're going to fill the gap right away or we're going to wait a little bit longer in the session. Often when the markets in Q, S&P, Dow, and Russell all opened up inside the prior day's trading range. So inside days, as we started off the session, can be a little more choppy. And often the better trades don't come into play until about 10.30, 11 a.m. Eastern on the equity indexes. Okay. All right, so it looks like, um, let's go back out here. Oh, there we go. Come on. There we go. Pop it up there. Get a picture of that. So I'm about ready to take some profits on. Um, I'm going to take profits on wheat. Okay, it has achieved uh, my target. Order filled. Okay, we're out of wheat. And let's uh, come back over here. We had the Euro trade. ECM23. Okay. Now we do need some help with the dollar moving lower, but uh, right now it's just quietly moving. This would be one of those trades towards covering your tuition. What I would anticipate on this trade is using that Fibonacci price extension line. Click once on your base, rally, and retest, and then look for target one and target two. And to move back up, okay? So once this price has gone in my direction, and I only need to make about 50 bucks a day to cover my tuition, okay, each day, is I'm going to adjust my stop loss up to at least covering that, okay? As price continues to go, we get a little bit more, and if you just, you're taking tomorrow off, then uh, you've made enough for two days, okay? <laughs> All right, we have British pound also. BPM23. Okay, we still have to accept the risk on the British pound. But again, using that Fibonacci price extension, click once on your base, once on your rally, and once on the retest. Okay. Once price moves two to one, I'm going to move my stop loss to where I make sure that I lock in my 50 bucks, okay? Right now I still have to accept the potential risk on the trade, okay? All right, so we have Euro, didn't get into gold. Anybody get into gold? It looks like 10 years coming back for me. TYM23. Okay, so we're a little bit positive on that. Still have risk on the trade. Again, grabbing that Fibonacci price extension. Click once on the base, once on the rally, and once on the retest. And then look for target one. And target two. Now, statistics will show you that you have an 85% chance you get target one. But our main goal here today in this, this next few weeks here is only to recover basically tuition if you choose to uh, participate in the uh, Mastering the Charge course, okay? You're going to use the rest of the month and going forward to cover that, okay? So you may stay or 
You may just take the profits and wait for the next trade. Each day, Caitlin puts together and put post in the, um, the, the prep screen these additional picks, and I also post them in the Discord room so that you guys can participate in. Some of them start a little earlier, okay? But we both have an early start, an early day, so we start posting those charts as soon as they get set up for us, okay? All right, so S&P futures were overbought. How are we doing on Russell? Okay, Russell coming back down, and we're approaching the 10 o'clock hour. Apple pulling back, Google. Yeah, I'm just watching, watching the stocks for a direction. The S&P was probably the one that was more overbought, easier to measure that direct, uh, the overbought on that. Still currently have a trade set up to take a breakout trade on the Dow, 33,770. And even though we were overbought on the NASDAQ and the S&P, price did not enter a zone for me to take a trade. Since we have narrow overnight Globex range, we are expecting a bigger move and a longer running trend. We just don't know if the trend is gonna to continue to the upside or if the trend is gonna continue or move to the downside, okay? By getting a better understanding of that, you can go out to a larger time frame and kind of look back and see where are we on a daily chart. Now it makes sense since price came back up into that um, area, where we had the 88.6% retracement of the move down, okay? All these levels here are just 88.6 on a daily chart. But on the bigger picture, we see the price broke out right into those speed bumps, okay? So the market's gonna get volatile until it provides us with an opportunity. Since we have the range down here, I wanna want you to keep really close eye on this and be defensive, okay? Why are we being defensive? Well, notice the market is quietly moving up, okay? But this whole range down here is, is a dead space. People are complacent, they're excited. The market's moving up, we're in an uptrend. Okay, but when you step a little bit further away from the chart, you say, well, we're, yeah, we're moving up, but the picture still shows that uh, we need to pull back before we can start that new uptrend, okay? If price does pull back on the daily chart, price will be dipping into that dead space, and we often see price go to the other side. Hmm. So we have to be aware of what the large time frame picture is telling us so that we can be defensive when we need to be defensive and we can be risk free when we need to be risk free. Okay. All right. Equity indexes are still being quiet, but we are expecting a significant move today. Now, when we expect that significant move, we may rely on other things outside the price chart, such as news, economic or political events that may be unfolding, okay? Keeping in mind that a lot of these are still priced into the market ahead of time. Oh, wow, nice, okay. Did anybody get the short on that open range breakout, 73.43? All right, thanks, Ted. A good question. Okay, so the drawing tool that you use, just click on drawing, and you're going to find Fibonacci price extension. Now, when using this tool, you have to click three times, okay? So well, click once to activate the tool, and you can see my cursor change to the shape of the tool. You click once, 
move the price up or down twice, and then you, you get your pullback, okay? Order now, two. all the calculation is on these is this first line is 50%. of this line. Okay, so basically if you take low to high and divide it by 50, okay, and then add it to the points, the third point, you're gonna get target one, and then target two would be 100%, okay? So how you set that tool up, go to settings, Major trend and retracement, just change those lines to black and then make them a solid color so you can see the structure, okay? The fit percentages, zero, 50, and 100. If you wanna plan a, a late entry, okay, or confirmation, late confirmation entry, you can use either 12.5 or 13 as that late entry point, okay? And this takes me back to my days where I used to teach that ABC pattern, okay? A point, B point, C point. Then you'd have a target entry, first target, second target, and of course, a stop loss, okay? Did that help, Ted? Order filled. Looks like we just got filled on the Dow. Looking for 50 bucks, you just got it. Okay. Let's come back in, let's get a, trip, a stop loss, uh, 33809. Anybody get the Dow? Remember, your better trades are going to be a little bit later in the session. We've still got about another 30 minutes, okay? Now, gosh. I still need to make up a drawdown on the S&P. Yeah, you're going, to, you're going to get some of these sudden breaks, okay? But we're expecting, because of the narrow overnight range, okay, we want to be a part of that. Now, you could have whatever your estimated loss may be, okay, that you're you're willing to accept, okay? And I want to, I'm going to change this to a 40-point buy stop. Okay, so this is a buy trailing stop. As long as price keeps going down, my stop is going to keep adjusting. Okay. And 40 bucks a point, it's going to run me about uh, 212 or $222 risk on a trade at this point. Okay. You can use trailing stop or you can capture your profits right now and say, okay, I made my daily payment to recover the cost of my tuition, okay? Uh, uh, you've got to have a plan. Why, why are you trading? You trading just trade? You want to hang out with some uh, fun people and stuff? Or are you, are you here to make money by trading or pay off different debt things that you do have, okay? All right, so let's check the stocks, Apple, Google, Tesla. I'm still kind of seeing a mixed market on the NQ. Not very strong bullish, not bearish, okay? A couple of things that I want to point out, though. When I'm looking at these charts for a direction, okay, for short-term intraday type trading, I am looking at the last anywhere from five to 10 candles on each chart, okay, for that direction. NVIDIA selling off Qualcomm Meta, okay? And of course, AIG, which is a lower price stock, but the direction is, 
been down, right? We just hit the 10 o'clock time frame. So at 10 o'clock Eastern, the price dropping, I'm expecting a bounce on Qualcomm, a bounce on AIG, a bounce on NVIDIA, okay? And then I'm looking for kind of a peak to be put in. We're still looking at a mixed market. Referring back to the earlier comments, S&P opened inside the prior day's trading range, okay? Dow opened inside the prior day's trading range. NASDAQ opened inside the prior day's trading range. So the better trades are going to be a little bit later in the session. Okay, getting a bounce off. Nice little bounce off of that. Now, this is not really a zone I would be looking to go long in, but it is a nice place to have potentially taken a profit. Holy smoke -aroos. All right. Ten-year. Looks like we just got a nice little jolt on some information that came out. Ten-year. Let's grab a picture of that. Okay, let's come back over. We had the, the Euro. Oh, I already hit my profit objective, dang it. Okay, but Euro's climbing. What about British pound? Okay, British pound on the way back up. Right. Locking in. How many got some of these? Nice job, Trader Debbie. All right, so it's a BP. What else we have been tenure? Profitable. Look at that. Silver came back. And gold. I mean, gold was a good trade. I just didn't participate in that one. A nice zone. I'm still a little bearish on the Dow. I think we're going to get a move to the downside. I mean, this is next. This is a second time we've we popped up into that area. So I'm still coming back in on this. I need to recover my earlier drawdown, seven seven zero. And then I'm going to back it up with a a trailing stop once filled. Hey, Russell's still heading back down. NASDAQ and S&P going up. One, two, Order three, field. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down stocks negative and five positive. Those are four. Okay, so S&P futures are still overbought by about 15 points, okay? As we do that calculation, on overbought, going in supply, we're looking for that opportunity. All right, so back in, I do have a drawdown. I'm gonna place a, a trailing stop on this. And then I'm just gonna look to recover my last trade that I took as a, a loss, okay? The yeah, S&P and the NASDAQ are going different directions. And we still have about 25 minutes to the bottom of the hour. Nice little flag or triangle formation. If you look at higher lows, relatively equal highs. Okay, so a continuation pattern on that gas. Okay. 83% of the time after one of these patterns comes a reversal. 
Okay, so realize where you're out, you are on the map when you're looking for trade opportunities like this. I mean, these are great breakout trades. Often, even the novice traders see these price patterns and they participate in them. Okay, but 83% of the time, the next pattern that forms after a continuation would be a reversal. All right, we're coming up into a potential place where we'll have some novice traders looking to short a drop base drop formation. Okay. Where I would anticipate all those stops to be triggered would be just on the other side of that. This zone is in the wrong location. Okay. Now let's come back up to the TY. Woo. Okay, I more than recovered my drawdown earlier. Okay, this is a, a, a feel good trade right now. And the dollar is starting to bounce. Okay, so I'm going to take the profit on this. Uh, I can wait till price gets up to my target, but that's more ego. Okay, we all eat, trade with emotions, and those emotions are based on a dollar amount. Okay, now you can be structurally saying, Oh, I got to stand my ground, I got to wait, got to wait. Okay, well, those are emotions too, but that's the fear of missing out. What we have to watch for is when we are seeing that green on the screen and the moment you feel that butterflies go, that feels good. That's when you need to take profits, okay? So I'm gonna close this trade with a profit. Order filled. Okay, and let's come back to the bridge pound. Bridge pound was doing that same kind of emotion for me. Okay. Finding some unfilled orders right there. Price still has the potential of moving up past this area. Okay. But we might see a little pullback. Okay. We need a lot more help from the US dollar to be moving down. And right now we just saw a reaction off of something that came out at 10 o'clock. Okay. And not much of a follow through on the US dollar still dropping okay so i'm making a, a choice here to go ahead and capture a profit okay let me just get a picture of that Okay, and what happened? Oh, it's like, where'd it go? Oh, I slid it over. Okay. Closing the trade now. Oh. Order filled. Nice job on everybody that took that. Okay, so we had profitable trade on Euro, British pound, Tenya. Okay. Silver now breaking back up. Anybody take the proximal line entry off of that or the confirmation entry here? And these are pretty significant little setups, okay? See, each... Each morning I post these in the Discord room, okay? Wow, some of them are still really going. Look at that, rocking to the upside. And I'm not seeing a lot of follow through on the dollar. I have recovered my earlier drawdown. Oh, 
Got my trailing stop. Come on, keep going down. I'm gonna take that. Order fill. I just wanted to get my money back. I, I I lost on that trade initially, and um, I just wanted to recover the, the cost. Okay. S and P. I have the same situation. Just looking to recover the cost of a drawdown that I had earlier as well. Okay, so I'm going to drop this down to a five minute chart. We still realize that um, S and P has been um, overbought. So I'm trying to find a nice way to get into this. Are we expecting small moves today or a big move today? And what makes us think that we're looking for a small move versus a big move? And what time should we expect price to make those moves? Everything that Caitlin and I, and I have been putting out here on as far as the pre-market prep, okay, and what we're looking at here are things that we check every day. Thanks, Sri. Yeah, small overnight range, okay. Then we turn the time frame down and we follow the five-step process. Five, step one, find support resistance, okay. Step two, identify your buy territory and sell territory. Find where you have a breakout. We're using cash value as well to understand that futures are still overbought relative to cash. I have five Dow stocks that are positive over 94 cents. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 that are negative. It leaves us with six times two would be negative 12 is what cash and futures are valued at, okay? Fair value. Negative 12 as far as cash and futures are coming up. So we're still 14 points overbought. Now, if you take 14 points, you're determining what you're going to take that breakout trade. Okay. If you subtract 14 points from uh, 2090, that's going to put you at what? 76 area. Okay. So what else is down there around that 76 area? Is it below the Globex? If it is, then you have an opportunity to take that breakout trade. Make sure if you're taking a breakout trade, you have a leg base, leg base group of candles in play, okay? Wow, you still in the Euro, Deb? 10 year. All right, here comes Canadian dollar coming around the far outside. Okay, but wait a minute. Why is Canadian dollar going down and all these going up? Don't know, don't care. Just a picture on a price chart. Notice the location just above that resistance area. Okay. This one. This breakout needs to be taken, okay, once you have your leg base, leg base group of candles. So if I choose to take this trade now on the breakout, let's just bring that up on the Canadian dollar. And I'm going to drop this down to smaller time frame, kind of look where I would have to manage my risk. I realize that if I do take that breakout trade, I've got a risk significant amount. Okay. The other thing that I'll point out here is I didn't have a leg base, leg base group of candles. This price has moved up. We just tapped that support. It is possible because the other FX products have been moving to the upside is that there's a little kind of fake out breakout, okay? So let's drop this down and, and kind of examine that, okay? 
you know, very often when we have those fake outs, uh, breakouts, we, we have a, a little speed bump here. There's no speed bump. So that's really tempting us to get in to that trade because we see a, a pocket of points. And we see us going into that dead space. But the overall trend into this structure says be careful with this one. That initial move in before we get a pullback and find some buyers to continue higher was to the upside. And often if we have a fake out breakout, we are looking at a higher high, not necessarily a lower high. Okay. So now as I'm breaking down the time frame, I'm saying, okay, I have to be cautious on taking this breakout trade, even though it looks really tempting. I have to be very careful with this one because of this new move into that. Okay. So as we are looking in, got your finger on the button, I'm sure you do. We still have about 15 minutes before the bottom of the hour where we start getting some of those better trends. So let's start breaking this down, 10 minute. And I realize at this moment, if I do get into this short trade, a breakout, that I have to wait, my stop loss is gonna be significant. I keep breaking down the time frame to find out where I can find that leg base, leg base group of candles. And everything keeps pointing back up here. So the risk, is elevated to take that trade short. The risk is outside my trading plan as far as what I can risk on a trade. Now, you can't talk yourself in, well, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. Okay? You can't talk yourself into it. There's nothing wrong with it being outside your trading plan. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, if the risk is greater than what you are willing to lose on a trade, then it's just simply not your trade. But watch it play out, okay? If you took the trade at the breakout, you have to risk that amount based on the trading plan that we share here at the Elite Trade, okay? That's tempting to get that breakout. I want all over it too. But I'm going to wait for it. I need a lake base, lake base group of candles, and I don't have it yet. Okay. And the time is also helping me. Okay. What else is going on on this price chart that would cause me to potentially hesitate to take the trade short? Well, this FX, commodity, FX, financial product are all going up, okay? So going short on the Canadian dollar without the leg base, leg base group of candles is going to be elevated risk. It can still work out and it looks like it would have gotten you about 50 bucks, okay? But as I walk through the trading plan, the risk was outside my trading plan. Okay, potential reward was well within it. Okay. And we're watching the time of day. Now, that brought in a lot of the breakout traders. Maybe the breakout traders had other information that they were relying on. Okay. But the information that we rely on is waiting for a leg base, leg base group of candles closer to that breakout point. Now, if that trade fails, I'm sorry, if that trade is going to work out, we have different places where we can look for an another, another opportunity, okay? And that would be looking for a leg base, leg base group of candles up a little bit higher. Once we find them, and when price moves away from that area greater than two to one. Wait a minute. 
that still puts my stop too far away, but we may have the leg base. It's a larger one, but a computer would recognize it. Still a risk too big, okay? So in this example here, I would need to see to activate this trade is a price would move away greater than two to one. I may miss the initial trade on the breakout. But once price comes down, come back up to that, there's still potential of some unfilled orders at that area. All right, how, how many guys are still in some of these? I took mine off, took the Dow off. Oh, NASDAQ still going up. Woo, Russell, almost to that target. Nice drop on the Russell. Now, is this a good zone to go long or is this a target zone right here? 1797, 1794. Target? or his own. Does have the lake base, lake base over here. There you go, thank you. Yeah, we don't have the three touches. So anytime we're looking to go long or short, we need to make sure that our zone we choose, okay, is below a support, or so below a resistance and above a, in a support, okay? But we do have a lot of caution in the markets right now because of the um, equity indexes. They're not all lined up, okay? Seeing still kind of a mixed market. Wow, Netflix was negative, now positive. Back and forth, okay? So the NASDAQ still may be just consolidating up here and, and remaining choppy. So I'm not playing with the NASDAQ. We'll jump over and look at something else that's a little easier. Okay. See this, this same setup right here, taking the breakout. A little speed bump right over here. And now we're looking for a leg base, leg base group of candles. It's a little closer to the breakout. Okay, so wait, let it set up. How'd the Canadian dollar do it? Yep, there it is. Okay. You see how we walked into that trade on the Canadian dollar, even though I'm looking like it was so tempting for that breakout? We gathered information outside the price chart, which was looking at the other FX products that were still moving up. We used the dollar. And based on our trading plan, we did not have a leg base, leg base group of candles in order to qualify that breakout trade. Okay within our risk parameters. So as we watch this develop, we may in fact create a less risk trade on the Canadian dollar. You can watch that on a small time frame for that leg base, leg base, and then re-enter for the breakout a little bit later. Toughest part is not pulling the trigger when you don't have all the information. So, so far since the open, we have noticed on the NASDAQ, for the most part, price has just been consolidated. S&P, okay, 
pretty much the same scenario. We do have several touches right here, and this is what we are looking at on the five minute chart, right? A small, I'm sorry, we're looking for that breakout. Another thing that I'd like to point out is when you have a, a level on a level on top of a level, you have two places where you found support, minimum three touch it, okay? Hopefully you guys are seeing how the live trading room is used to reinforce what Caitlin and I cover in the master in the charts, okay? Reinforcing the rules. Now, level on top of a level, which can be a nice little breakout, but it may be short-lived. We do have that speed bump right there. Right? And we have to be aware that that speed bump is in place. Now, you could look for a leg base, leg base group of candles and anticipate a trap. Okay. Find the leg base, leg base group of candles inside that speed bump. You may not take the trade short because profit potential is not the greatest. Okay. You're still working on uh, the leg base, leg base group of candles right here. And potentially, this would be your, your protective stop loss. Uh, come on, color. Now, the other thing to point out is when you have uh, the, the uh, support on top of support like this, you need to look inside here and make sure, is, is it a dead space? Is it a speed bump, okay? It'll help us from taking trades that are not going to necessarily work out. All right, who took... Who took some profits? I, I just want to kind of get an idea as we go into the wrap up of our session. Did any of you guys take any of these trades? I'd still wait for the zone. This upper zone's not in the right. Maybe it hasn't gone to six. Maybe I did miss it. Maybe. I like the lower zone anyways. So nobody took any of the trades that we're putting out there? Yeah. All right, so I'm waiting for a leg base, leg base on the S&P. Nice little breakout trade on Dow. Okay. Oop, here we come. Target, 1797. Nice job, Dan. All right, that brings us to the end of our session. Some really good lessons in here uh, in this session today as well, as far as what trades to participate in. But anyways, uh, I'm going to pass the mic back over to Caitlin, um, and you guys can, uh, we'll do a wrap up there, and then we'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Oh, and um, keep in mind, tomorrow is the start of the new Mastering the Charts review and recap. 
Okay, so there was an email that went out last week. If you want to sign up for that, okay. And um, yeah, I'll pass it back over to you, Caitlin, and uh, we'll wrap up this session for today. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. And yeah, now that you mentioned it, I just want to mention um, with the recap session starting tomorrow, I did want to post the link in the chat for you guys. Again, everything can be found on the upcoming events tab on the elitetrade.com. So if you click on that tab, the first um, button here is going to be for the Master in the Charts recap and review sessions for the month of June. Those are Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, 1130 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then just below that is going to be the Master in the Charts three-day event. So to register for both of those, I'm going to post the link in the chat. And those are going to be under the Upcoming Events tab on the EliteTrade.com. Alrighty, so let's do our recap. So I have our prep screen on the right-hand side now. It's going to be our recap screen. The zones are still going to be the same since they're a little bit further away. Um, as we've just seen a lot of consolidation for most of the session, really some great trade opportunities um, that a lot of you got into. So great job on that. As far as the S&P, a little bit higher time frame, looking for a pullback into our nearest buy zone is going to be all the way down at the origin of that last move to the upside. So three minute time frame, 4190.25. Stop at 4184.25. And then as we can see, trend again, still overall to the upside. So looking for those breakout trade opportunities higher with it now being an outside day or waiting for those pullbacks down into our buy zones. Going over to the NASDAQ. So pretty similar picture there as far as the S&P and the NASDAQ breaking out to the upside outside day. So overall looking for the trend to continue to the upside. Monitoring on the smaller time frames, we just splice in with those breakout trades to the upside, or again, waiting for those pullbacks down into our buy zones. Nearest buy zone at the origin of that last move to the upside is going to be 14,300.75. Stop at 14,272.75. And waiting for that pullback down into our buy zone or going down to the smaller time frames to look for ways to splice into the next impulse move to the upside. All right, Russell. Great move to the downside here as we saw price rallied up. Not a whole lot of buy orders, so price is quickly moving through. Um, this pocket of points to the downside, but it's always important to monitor when you have the pocket of points. Those are some great areas where we can look to stay in those trade setups longer. Price coming back down to the origin of that last move to the upside. We have our three minute buy zone within our buy territory entry 1753.6. Stop at 1748.5. It's going to be waiting for that pullback down into our buy zone. To the left-hand side, not a whole lot on the way to the upside. So keep an eye on that as we do have another pocket of points to the upside above that high. And then a pocket of points to the downside that we're currently breaking into. To the upside, nearest five-minute sell zone is just above that pocket of points. 1868.1. Stop at 1877.9. All right, and lastly, the Dow rallied right up into that resistance area that we mentioned from our pre-market routine this morning. We can see those areas where price is using up those sell orders once, twice, three, this is the fourth time now, so still a significant amount of sell orders at this point. Once all those sell orders are gone, 
be looking for that breakout trade to the upside above all those highs. The highest point being above 33,918. So breakout to the upside, 33,918. Price coming back down into that pocket of points and then moving down even further till we get to our nearest buy zone within our buy territory. 10 minute time frame, 32,876. Stop at 32,742. All right, so take a screenshot of that. Again, our buy and sell zone still a little bit further away at this point. So we discussed in our pre-market routine, some of those um, more consolidated price movements in the overnight session can lead to higher volatility. So keep an eye on that as we may see some additional volatility until price starts to reach our buy zones and our sell zones. And as mentioned, for uh, information to register for the Master in the Charts recap and review sessions, as well as the Master in the Charts three-day event this weekend, all of that can be found on the EliteTrade.com under our upcoming events tab. All right, so again, screenshot that. Same as our prep screen. And, and yeah, just waiting for price to rally up into those sell zones or down into the buy zones. Overall in favor more of our buy zones. Again, as a lot of the equity indexes have been in more of an uptrend, taking short trades, gonna be a little bit more elevated risk, really wanting to trade with the trend with those pullbacks into our buy zones or breakout trades to the upside. Alrighty, Jeff, anything else that you want to add before we wrap up today's session? Yep. Um, I'm going to shield the screen back from you for one, one moment. This will just be kind of a quick little recap. Sure. Um, Canadian dollar is still a setup. I dropped it down to a, a three minute chart and um, I'm kind of creeping up on this one here, um, looking for a leg base, leg base group of candles. Now, I'm still going to use the same entry that's posted, okay? But I need to find a leg base, leg base group of candles before, so I can manage the risk on that trade. Okay, I'm watching that closely. A couple of times, it's it's gotten like, oh, it's going to happen now, and but then it keeps popping back up. Okay, so that one keep an eye on. Uh, seeing the, the charts, uh, Caitlin posted in that supply zone four time. You can see how it's nice, tight consolidation. Okay, this could continue and go back to the upside. Get that breakout, come up into that uh, prep screen zone. We also have an unfilled outside day gap that was left over right around at 34.99, 34.88. Um, as far as cycling back to the trades, great job on those who took the, um, the euro. 10 year, okay, British pound. Okay. We, we took all of those and got out with a profit uh, and even recovered an earlier drawdown that I had on the uh, S&P. So same scenario, watching the S&P, just like the Canadian dollar, I'm looking for a potential leg base, leg base group of candles. I'm still bearish on the S&P based on what I see the cash and futures value and interpreting that as futures are overbought relative to cash. Okay. So we're going to wrap up this session. Thank you, Caitlin, for doing the pre-market prep and getting us all set up and our zones. Okay. And uh, thanks everybody. How many guys made some money today in the, in the room on some of the trades we posted? How many guys made some money? Ron did. Okay, good. Ron and Janet. Everybody else had their hand clutched to the mouse. No trades taken. <laughs> All right. I guess the, uh, the cat has your mouse. Well, your hands are tied up there. <laughs> All right, everybody have a good week, uh, good day. Um, we will see you guys a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll be over in the Discord room uh, shortly. And uh, 
we'll go from there. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again. Bye, everyone.